Yeah, I think uh, it's, yeah. Uh, go ahead with the, how the whole tempo of examination goes. So, uh, first, uh, hello, everybody. And uh, uh, my uh, exam was on uh, uh, 8th of October in Mumbai, uh, uh, like Mumbai MGM Hospital. So, uh, the flow of exam, which I had uh, received, was I started with first of communication station. So, I was a little relieved. Uh, and, uh, like, first thing, what is more important, like, when the uh, station start uh, they uh, ask you to sit outside so that is the time you get to read the scenario so they will provide you with the paper and pencil please write down the details and please uh, put the name of uh, mother and child in a block uh, in a like a little broad because we tend to forget and while talking to the role player we tend to forget the name so the first uh, communication i had was uh, some three month uh, uh, some three month old baby with fever and uh, uh, child's uh, uh, blood culture had okay and uh, uh, then uh, okay so the child's uh, uh, blood culture had grew some uh, organism and then the LP was done. And then la later the microbiologist has called and said that this was not the child's uh, blood culture report. So it was a uh, uh, error which has caused and now I have to tell the mother uh, regarding the report. So it was like an angry mother scenario where I have to uh, uh, tell her the uh, incident which has occurred and uh, just uh, pacify her. So uh, I greeted and I, I asked about the uh, uh, knowledge about the any incident she know anybody has informed. And uh, then I uh, uh, straight away uh, reached the agenda and I told that this is what has happened. So obviously mother uh, reacted very uh, angrily, but uh, uh, role player were very subtle. So like the way we uh, discuss with our friends and the one who does the role play, it's very uh, like actual kind of, but in exam, they were very subtle role player. So I could uh, manage and uh, like she asked that, why did you uh, insisted uh, me for to do uh, LP? Then uh, this is um, uh, unnecessarily my child has to go. Then I apologize for the thing. But I said, if uh, there was, uh, if we couldn't have find the, a cause of fever but anyways we have gone ahead with the uh, multiple investigations and the good part is that child is uh, without any fever and uh, 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 and all the reports like blood culture and the lp was uh, negative so good part is that your kid is good and uh, uh, for the incident uh, we like we apologize for whatever has happened so i think she was fine but only thing uh, she kept on saying that okay i want to i don't want this to happen to anybody's kid and then i said okay we'll be uh, we have taken this uh, matter uh, very seriously and we have formed the committee to you know, talk about this and uh, we have uh, done an incident reporting only thing that uh, she never uh, asked about the complaint so i didn't give any details about the complaint she said okay i want to meet the consultant i said okay we'll uh, arrange the meet so i think uh, i could uh, complete uh, before 10 seconds so for 10 seconds um, like examiner and role player everyone was sitting so i i, I had completed giving all the information so it was okay so this was my first uh, communication. Any, any, so sir, can I go ahead for the second communication? Uh, just a minute. Okay. So uh, you guys understood, no? So there was a misplacement of the CSF sample, no? There was a report, blood culture report, which was uh, reported wrongly. Yeah, blood culture. Report. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. So uh, basically, the lumbar puncture was done on the baby, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, so no questions. You can go ahead. Yeah, next. Yeah. So now the uh, second uh, communication was there was a, a three-day-old child who was through uh, feeds and uh, which for which uh, they had given a phenobarb and uh, baby septic screen uh, was done, abgas were normal and they have done a, a cranial ultrasound which showed some uh, right cerebrals, uh, uh, right, uh, it's like a, a signs of some is ischemia. But uh, there was uh, no other history, there, there was no history of asphyxia and there was no uh, significant history. And there was a uh, information uh, given that uh, 
uh, mother had gone home and uh, this has happened in the evening and mother doesn't know anything about this over the uh, whole night that child had threw the fit and started with phenobab. So the uh, scenario was you have to explain mother that this has happened and at present child is doing good. So it was like a breaking bad news. Uh, so uh, when I asked about the ask mother about what she knows that she was like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to get discharged. So she was not knowing about the incident. And I was uh, supposed to tell that and that was a little shocking for her. And then then, they, then she started asking uh, why this has happened. I had followed up all the OPD visits. There was no significant history. So uh, uh, it's just that I told that all the investigations are fine. Good thing is right now the child has stopped convulsing and we will follow up uh, over the time about uh, uh, what, uh, what child will present. So she was asking now uh, what happens to my child that whether he'll be having uh, fits continuously or he would require some medication, there will be any disability or not. So uh, uh, I just told her that right now at this moment, we won't be able to tell you the exact picture, but uh, as we are uh, going to follow up uh, your kid in our OPD and we'll be doing all the developmental assessment on and off. And if needed, uh, we'll go ahead with some other investigation. Then she asked about, okay, uh, uh, if what if uh, my child uh, through the convulsion again? Then I said, okay, if such thing happened, we'll go ahead and do an EEG and maybe neuroimaging like MRI. And uh, over the period, we'll be able to tell what uh, deficit child will have. But at present, uh, the uh, thing is your kid is doing good. Then uh, she asked me why this has happened because uh, the child, uh, like all the history is normal, why this has happened with me. So I said that uh, there could be some, uh, uh, there could be some uh, reasons which we may not be able to understand. Uh, this may have happened uh, in utero time and uh, we don't know re uh, the exact reason. So over the time, how the child will uh, present and will have the symptoms, we'll be able to tell you. So I think she was um, she was convinced what I have told. And I think uh, this is how my communication uh, was there. Basically, it was a case of neonatal stroke, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to, uh, you know, uh, first thing is you need to tell about the uh, what is it actually exactly what is what has happened and what are we suspecting okay and uh, what investigation you are planning and uh, so basically neuroimaging metabolic blood work of all those things you need to say and you do the counseling and that's what actually yeah. okay and you need to give the mental support and uh, empathy yeah all right. Thank you. Next, we can go to next yeah. station. So the next uh, station was video station. So my first video was uh, an infant with inspiratory strider and a child was with uh, mild uh, <laughs> respiratory distress and he was otherwise comfortable. So uh, basically after the video, they asked what is the uh, uh, diagnosis and what differential you want to give. So the whatever strider, inspiratory strider differential with the uh, according to the age, like group, uh, bronchiolitis, then it could be pertussis. Then they asked what kind of a, uh, like what treatment and how you will assess uh, group patient and uh, uh, what uh, what are the other uh, differential you want to uh, you know, see then how uh, you're going to manage how you will examine this child uh, would you uh, uh, want to see how how you will uh, examine the child so just like uh, put on the uh, mother's lap you don't disturb child give the oxygen so all the basic questions he has asked about and uh, I think he asked me about the epiglottitis. Uh, what are the causes of epiglottitis? How we'll go ahead uh, and examine the kid? Uh, will you go and uh, do the throat examination? And if not, what you will uh, monitor in this child? And I think I, I was able to tell uh, the causes of uh, epiglottitis and how you will treat it. And uh, um, I think this was this much was the, in video. So it's like di diagnosis, give the differential, how, how you'll treat the condition and uh, what a uh, few plus minus condition they will ask. So this was the first video. Then the second video was there was a 12 year old girl and the, in, uh, she was in ICU setup and there was a consultant who was doing a um, uh, 
lower uh, limb examination with uh, there was areflexia and uh, uh, she was uh, there, there was no uh, uh, planters there was no uh, reflexes as well as their power was less than three by five she was not able to move and then uh, they showed the upper limb where she was able to move the hands above head and she was able to speak uh, so, uh, and by this, uh, this video has stopped and then uh, they asked me about what is the diagnosis. So it was a GBS uh, case. Then, and then he asked me about uh, what are the differential uh, of uh, this. So um, I have told, her, uh, told him the differential. Only thing that I, I told him uh, that one of the differential could be polio. Then he said, how many cases of polio you have seen? So... I said nothing. So he said, no, then don't tell me if you haven't seen the cases. So I said, okay. And then uh, he asked me, how how will you uh, decide about uh, how this child will progress? So uh, whether the, there was involvement of respiratory muscles, there was a, a, a bulbar involvement, uh, and how this child has uh, uh, presented over the week. So uh, the criteria of how the progression is there, how fast the progression. So that will depend upon the uh, prognosis of uh, this child. And then uh, he asked me about uh, what uh, what are the treatment uh, you will give. So uh, I told him about uh, IVIG, plasma pheresis, if uh, methylprednisolone. Then he he kept on asking what else, what else. So um, uh, I was not sure what he was asking, like uh, uh, some uh, immunological, like immunosuppressant. But I wasn't sure what more he was asking. So I have told him the basic uh, mode of treatment. But uh, then and before uh, he could just ask the what more, what more, before that the rang bell. So this is how my video station stopped. Yeah. So basically lower limb paralysis, uh, you can say paralysis, uh, yeah, in case of actual plastic paralysis, you need to give the differential diagnosis and uh, yeah, so and management. Is it right? Yeah. So uh, uh, everybody, like he asked after, uh, Plasma pheresis, what else? What else? So everybody, like after the end of the discussion, everybody was asking what else. So we, I, I was not knowing what else. I mean, is plasma pheresis. Okay, then you, you go for the oh, maybe yeah. pulse rose, pulse rose methyl 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 we can try. IV, IG, plasma pheresis, methyl and uh, then like immunomodulator drugs. Drug, sometimes you will, okay. That, that also told after that also he was yeah, telling Azath, me. Azath, Azath, Prine, and methotrexate, or maybe combination of medication. Then, um, um, yeah. Uh, then if child uh, is having um, chronic, uh, you know, inflammatory <coughs> demonetic polyneuropathy, then you go for the steroids, like long-term steroids. Long-term steroids. Yeah, something so, like that. I think this much we have told, this much I have told, but uh, he was not very satisfied. So he kept on asking. Even, even the anti-monocular antibodies also, like, they will try rituximab and other. Yeah, I think we, I told that also. But, uh, <laughs> then what is he left out? <laughs> there is nothing think, left out. And, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Would it be supportive care? Because yeah, that, in, in GBS, uh, they can get res go into respiratory failure. So that monitoring and supportive care is very important. Yeah, uh, Rashmi, he asked me what else. So that the paramedical help was, I told him that we have to yeah. monitor uh, the BP, then the respiratory muscle thing. But I think he... God knows what he wanted. You no, know, how to monitor? Then, then definitely, the, you see, the, the, I want to look for the daily assessment of the you know weakness and uh, neurological yeah. examination. Pyrometry. Yeah. Pyrometry. Pyrometry. Okay. Single, then um, single um, breath count. Uh, uh, breath count. Uh, single breath count. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those things are peakometry. So these things are actually done to assess the worsening of the basically involvement uh, to know the involvement of the respiratory muscles. The respiratory muscle. So this yeah. is how uh, this video station. Uh, so I felt it's what's okay. Then uh, then the clinical started. The so differential first, diagnosis. What did you give? Uh, I think uh, uh, that list whole of the list the diphtheria. Snake, okay, whole of the list. What whole what whole list? Whole. Okay, <laughs> okay. One thing is yeah. So uh, Gulen Barre syndrome. Then. Yeah, polio malaritis, however, it is unilateral and, you know, yeah. those so uh, I, I told that malaritis. it is unilateral. So he said, but if, if it you haven't seen, why you are seeing that? So I said, okay, yeah. fine. Traumatic neuritis, yeah, yeah. coronary injury, spinal cord injury, uh, transverse malaritis, yeah. Transverse uh, malaritis, maybe, yeah. Uh, uh, spinal cord, uh, some tumors or infraction. Um, yeah, these so things. All, all the level, uh, what are the, uh, like at the spinal cord, at the anterior spinal uh, uh, cell, every uh, le level uh, we, I have given the differential that I had given, but I said polio malaria. So he took me out of that and he started on that. 
so uh, and then how this is ended then the first uh, clinical started so this was a, a 12 year old boy who was a uh, uh, he was with a um, uh, microcephaly there was a squint and uh, i just started i just greeted and uh, the stem said you uh, do the uh, cns examination i think uh, uh, you do the cns examination this was the stem then i started with uh, uh, the mentation he looks fine he i asked him whether he's going to uh, school or not the speech was normal there was a, a kind of a microcephaly but uh, and uh, uh, the build was normal then uh, uh, on local examination there was no much of uh, any hypertrophy or uh, any uh, 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 atrophy or anything which was visible uh, which i could see and then i started ask him for gait then gait seems also to be normal so till the time i started with the uh, uh, local examination of the like cns i wasn't sure what i'm dealing with then uh, when I did a lower limb, the lower limb uh, tone was not hypertonia and there was no uh, deep tendon reflexes which were exaggerated and I couldn't get plantas. And uh, uh, so uh, till the time the, I felt the lower limb tone is, uh, I wasn't convinced with the hypertonia. And then uh, uh, I went for upper limb just to understand what is I'm dealing with. The upper limb tone was hypertonia and there was a deep tendon reflexes were exaggerated. And before, and then uh, after this much was done and then he asked me about the diagnosis. So I just gave him uh, the summary and then I said that lower limb, uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced with the hypertonia, but the upper limb is, uh, uh, there is a hypertonia. So he said, tell me the diagnosis. I said, looks like a CP. He said, okay, fine, it is a CP, but I was not able to tell that it was a quadriplegic CP and because of the uh, you know, physiotherapy, the lower limb tone was improved and the gait was normal. I said only CP. He said, okay, it is a CP. Now tell me uh, what, how you will go ahead. So I'll like the same, uh, you take the complete history and then uh, uh, you will go for uh, the parameters and I, I'll involve the team. I'll go ahead with the physiotherapy. I'll see for any other associated symptoms, seizures, eye examination. And uh, I think this much he asked. He asked me about, uh, tell me uh, uh, the team member and how you see what is the prognosis of this child? So I said, he's anyways walking. Uh, um, lower limb tone has normalized. So the mobility wise, we have to go ahead with physiotherapy and uh, occupational therapy. And I think this much, because in clinical, you hardly get any time. Like six minutes after only six minutes complete, they will start the questions. So in that two minutes, this much he has asked. And I think I came out. So this much, uh, so the thing was, uh, uh, as this, child was a quadriplegic CP, but just because his lower limb tone was uh, not hypertonic, there was no spasticity, there was no contracture. So uh, the I, I was confused uh, what I'm dealing with, but I was I was sure enough that it is not hypotonia, that there is no uh, other calf muscle hypertrophy, but I wasn't sure till the upper limb I did, and I thought it is a hypertonia and this is a CP child. So like, in the first clinical only, I was so confused that what diagnosis I have to give. But then when I said it is a CP, he said, yeah, it is a CP. Now you tell me about the further thing. And I think I was able to answer all the other questions he asked. And this is how the first clinical was done. Okay, well done. Very good. Yeah, we can go go ahead with the next clinical. Yeah. yeah, then the, the second uh, second clinical was there was nine year old girl with a short stature, and uh, the stem said you do the back uh, you do the general examination uh, with uh, a special note on back. This mu this much was the stem, and uh, the girl was short stature. She was of normal mentation, and uh, when I asked her uh, for a gait, the gait seems to be normal. And then uh, when um, the general examination was just normal as a normal child, on, uh, like only the height was on a lower centile, and uh, the back was there is a large tuft of hair on the lower lumbar area, and that's it. That was the uh, uh, general examination. Then. <laughs> Then uh, the examiner said, you do the relevant examination. So ideally, uh, uh, CNS examination, like 
I asked the girl to lie down and I was checking power, tone and reflexes. I, I Though I little messed up in that station where she the examiner uh, said that you do the relevant and I was doing then I, I could do the uh, power and power goes normal and there were no exaggerated reflexes and then the uh, then she asked me uh, tell me your diagnosis i said it is kind of a neural tube defect uh, uh, and uh, this could be just occulta but right now we are not uh, uh, as she has not manifested so she said what investigation you want to go ahead with so i said uh, mri uh, spine and uh, mri brain to look for uh, any um, uh, hydrocephalus though uh, with the history and the examination it doesn't seem to she said, what uh, uh, associated thing and how, what are the teams you want to, uh, like how you will monitor her in uh, the OPD. Uh, so right now her gait was normal and she didn't have any other complaints. So I said, we will uh, uh, follow up her in OPD for a regular checkup and we'll see for a lower, like CNS examination for a tone or any change of gait or any uh, uh, hypertonia or spasticity. So I think this much she asked. This was the second clinic. Very good. Yeah, you can go to the next question. Yeah. So the third, third uh, thing, third uh, station was uh, there was a, a three-year-old uh, child, a three-year-old male child, and the stem was uh, he's getting a, a, a repeated. A, a, uh, I think repeated uh, repeated malaise and he's not growing. This was the stem, and uh, this was a CVS uh, station. And uh, there was a three-year-old child whose built was uh, fine, but uh, he had grade one clubbing and uh, there was a cyanosis. And uh, on examination, uh, there was like, it was not kind of a uh, uh, hyperdynamic circulation. Uh, I could just palpate apex in the uh, fifth intercostal space. There was no palpable P2, but uh, there was two murmur, which I could hear. Uh, there was a VSD. And uh, in the second left intercostal space, there was a pans uh, like uh, ejection systolic murmur. So he asked me, what is your diagnosis? So I said, it's a VSD with PS. Th then he said, is it so common to find both VSD and PS? So uh, I said, uh, you can get uh, in TOF, you can get uh, uh, pulmonary stenosis. <laughs> then he was asking, do you get a VSD murmur in TOF? So I said, no, it's not very common. So he said, okay, tell me uh, what uh, complication this child will have. So I said, it, he can have a heart failure. He, he can uh, develop uh, infective endocarditis and he can develop hypermigrantis. This much, uh, but it wasn't very convinced with my findings. But uh, before I could convince the, <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Dr. Raj, are you around? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I think this this uh, station is uh, same as Dr. Manish. Seriously. Hello, can you hear me? No, your voice is not clear. Am I am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello. Now you're audible. Hello. Yes. Hello. So, uh, can you hear me now? Sir, your voice is still. Uh, Project, little... are you there? Yeah, yeah, sir, I'm there. Your voice is not very audible. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, I was sitting in the balcony. I thought, uh, so it will be so, you. So you were saying what Manisha had the case uh, with uh, VSD with PS. This was the same case. Yeah, it is uh, looks like a similar uh, case, isn't it? No, but her her uh, uh, kid's uh, age was little high. No, sir, he was nine year old with. Uh, uh, it, it, it was that traumatic case, no? This okay. child was three year old. How oh, this is three year old child? So where was the mama? This was mama. Like I could hear was VSD with PS Parmar, and uh, so uh, like everybody who came out, and after that we were not in a union of what? Not a single person had a same murmur <laughs> and same finding. So we didn't no. know what. What was the finding and what was the diagnosis? Okay, but clinically, child was stable and there was no uh, was, no cyanosis clubbing. No, no, no he was grade scar. one clubbing with cyanosis, and uh, uh, he was uh, not in failure. And uh, there was a uh, uh, there was a uh, pansystolic murmur and there was a ejection systolic murmur at left uh, pulmonary. So grade one clubbing with the cyanosis. Okay, there was a scar mark. Was there any scar mark? There was no scar mark. Okay. All right. Uh, so what could be this? Basically, it goes in favor of cyanotic congenital heart disease. Yeah. So cyanotic congenital heart disease, then VST, giving VST, AST. Uh, no. Um, so it is it is like pulmonary stenosis, uh, but then uh, could be tough, but then... Uh, uh, he 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 asked me. I said VSD with PS. So he said, "Is it so common to get VSD with PS? Uh, child has cyanosis." I said, "Then top top physiology. You can just put it like you know top uh, physiology. You can you could then say." Then he asked me, "Do you get it? Uh, we uh, we uh, pansystolic murmur in top?" I said, "No." Yeah. 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 Then he asked me about what are the complications. Then uh, uh, heart failure, infective endocarditis, and isomengerization. This was uh, he asked, and uh, but then um, uh, VSD. Uh, he was three year old. So why isomengerization so early? Agree, agree. So that's why I'm, I'm, I didn't tell you about uh, isomengerization syndrome here. So it's a congenital uh, cyanotic it's heart disease. Cyanotic congenital heart disease with so, the decreased pulmonary blood flow. So we can give the other different blood diagnosis. Blood. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this was the third uh, clinical. Then the fourth one was, uh, this was a child, four-year-old male child with hepatosplenomegaly. The stem said that he comes to the OPD for follow-up regularly for some treatment. Then uh, when uh, I was examining the child, child would uh, look little puffed, but there was no, uh, uh, there was no pallor, there was no ictrus, there was only hepatosplenomegaly and there was no scar mark of any like uh, repeated transfusion. There was no marks on the body and uh, there was no, uh, there was hep mainly hepatosplenomegaly. So the, uh, then she asked me about the differential where this could be like a kind of a chronic hemolytic anemia but then uh, the anemia was not i was not convinced with the anemia so i was not convinced with the uh, chronic uh, uh, diagnosis of chronic hemolytic anemia but this was uh, mostly a chronic hemolytic anemia and uh, he, maybe thalassemia intermedia kind of thing where he is coming for uh, regular follow so Unless the intermedia, the child, they won't have so much of effort as pneumonomically, but could be there, but uh, they won't regularly come for the, some treatment, actually. But uh, like for treatment, if blood transfusion, there should be marks, but there was no marks. So Clinically, was there any anemia, some jaundice, or something? At least I could not appreciate the uh, anemia as well as jaundice. So she kept on asking me what... what, child, what height, weight were normal? Height, weight were normal. You can give differential diagnosis for hepatosplenomegaly, okay? So you can can give anything like you know you can start with the infection storage. So I, I, start, I started with the acute infection and then everything about hepatosplenomegaly. Then she asked me what investigation you will go ahead. I said CBC, peripheral smear, then uh, uh, liver function test. She asked me HB electrophoresis. What else? What else? And then uh, till the time in this, I didn't reach the treatment because I wasn't wasn't sure but the only thing she asked me of uh, how you will uh, uh, do the like measure the liver she uh, and she said now check the ascites if it is there and then she uh, came near the table and she saw everything what I was doing 
so i think uh, she again asked me about how how did how will you do the general examination how liver will be measured and then do the uh, shifting dullness and all and then by the time she asked me about the uh, more investigation the time was over so here i didn't reach the diagnosis as well as the treatment was there any lymphadenopathy any bleeding no. tendency anything okay no. then leukemia is also less likely no so, child I was well grown uh, height was good uh, uh, child was well grown he has just hepatosplenomegaly but he wasn't anemic okay it could be still uh, like you know all right all right thalassemia major but well controlled like uh, so still it could be then other differential diagnosis you can uh, give still like you know storage disorder uh, yeah and uh, uh, malignancy yeah those yeah. things yeah uh, may maybe she just wanted the list of investigation how i'll go about the hepatosplenomegaly yeah examination they they, they try to check uh, how how you are going to do the yeah. assessment per se okay and uh, whether you are going to put forward all the investigations and uh, whether you are going to involve uh, you know but it, the, the required team for the management of yeah so i think uh, uh, this was the toughest uh, clinical sta like uh, uh, station where uh, i didn't like i was very clueless and by the time i came out i wasn't sure what is happening inside so by that time uh, the uh, that the next i think was development uh, so guys so basically I see second day i know though all the sessions were difficult for you so to those who passed on second day still like you know you, you guys did well like i, I can say that <laughs> no, this is a defense i would say that, okay <laughs> but uh, yeah i think uh, like when you do clinical and by the time you reach the summary and if you don't know the diagnosis your whole uh, uh, like whole confidence goes off where you don't know what you are going to say so i think there was that is what you were not going to do that you should not lose your confidence or hope anything like and still you have the hope to do better in the next uh, station yeah. yeah so this was my last clinical station where i was not uh, i had not done well and when i came for my developmental station i didn't read the stem properly because i was still in that clinical uh, station somebody and... told you not to read properly <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just telling the uh, all friends that please read that and leave that clinical station behind because the time is very less and uh, the stem is uh, like the scenario is very big and you read to need to read and note down and enter because then you don't have to read it so then i had my developmental station there uh, the uh, there was a 3 year old child and uh, i have to assess the speech language and social and uh, uh, sir i don't remember much of the history but i will tell whatever in that history uh, the uh, the child was doing everything his uh, like uh, there was no issue of his uh, uh, like uh, antenatal or any issue with the birth uh, history he was full weight and uh, he cried immediately there was no neonatal issues and uh, he had only in the history he had repeated ear infections so and uh, uh, he he had that uh, asom and that that had causes uh, isolated hearing issues and that has caused is uh, uh, there was a uh, receptive speech was normal and there is a delay in expressive speech so his uh, otherwise uh, like his uh, 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 hearing uh, thing was yeah this is this is uh, you know a little bit you know um, i i can say when when hearing is affected so uh, receptive speech is more affected rather than expressive speech actually so but in case of motor conditions like myopathy muscular dystrophy is rcp so where the motor uh, you know speech is more affected than the receptive speech uh, but there can be variations yeah, yeah so in this child the receptive was also delayed but the receptive was not as delayed as the expressive speech his expressive speech was not there so only uh, like when she asked me about what could be the cause i said uh, this could be repeated ear infection so she said what uh, team uh, you will uh, ask for so that uh, that salt team then he, uh, what is the uh, like specialty you will ask for the answer ent specialist will see and then uh, the further management so i think uh, i don't remember now <laughs> this much was asked and okay. i i think i did uh, like this was the station i i uh, scored well <laughs> so i think i was good enough good so, no no see thing is that in the history if you are able to find out what is the reason for the particular developmental delay then that that's it okay and, yeah, and the, one thing was in that history i was very systematic 
So I think the mark was given to the systematic approach. Uh, I could give the uh, age, uh, gross motor, fine motor, and the cause for de uh, delay. And uh, the developmental assessment, uh, I think I was fair enough. Uh, so, uh, so the whole uh, station went well. Very good. And then the last uh, station was, uh, there was a seven-year-old girl who had gone to a birthday party, had eaten a chocolate cake. And uh, then she had developed uh, uh, some breathing difficulty and she has rushed to a uh, emergency where she had given some injection and then she is now settled. Now you have to talk to a mother. Her name was some Penelope. That was the most difficult name uh, in the whole uh, exam. And uh, I think uh, there was a multiple uh, uh, history. The child had a asthma. Child have had a multiple food allergy. Like she had this repeated episode one one more time, but that was not severe enough. She had some strawberry uh, and some other food uh, uh, allergy as well. And she had a uh, uh, mother also had uh, some uh, um, uh, elder brother has some food allergy. Mother had asthma. She had asthma. Everybody had allergy. So uh, by the end, I, like I could tell that this is the uh, anaphylaxis. So now the in this session, whatever the examiner had 10 to 12 questions, he asked me in that station. And I think uh, that was a good, like he was a, uh, um, like, uh, I think he was a Britisher. Uh, uh, and he had all 10 questions. So he said, okay, now you're finished. Now tell me how you reached the diagnosis, like what you feel that in emergency, what injection must have been given and what child must have presented with what uh, system. So he asked me about the definition of anaphylaxis and what are the system involved. Then uh, he said, uh, now, if you want to treat this child, uh, what are the all uh, uh, consideration you will keep in mind, like, uh, like how you diagnose that she has a multiple uh, food allergy. So she had this history, two history, and uh, then uh, uh, family also had a, uh, a multiple allergy. She had a asthma. So everything uh, turned out to be, she had a multiple food allergy. And yeah. maybe allergic thing has caused uh, the exaggeration. Then he uh, then um, he said, how you will manage this child? How What you will tell? So there was an EpiPen. Then uh, what where they, they are residing? How much far is the hospital? What are the uh, emergency uh, uh, like in emergency situation, how the child will reach the hospital. This uh, needs to be taken care of. And I think uh, the like questions were very standard. So this station went very well and I, I could answer uh, things. But the uh, questions were all standard, whatever we have done. The, the only thing that like, everything, whole exam is we have done some or the other time. It is only at that moment what you answer is the key. Yeah, yeah. So it was a case of multiple food allergy with uh, anaphylaxis. Yeah, and that too then is, um, you know, strong from the step asthma and the food allergy is there. Uh, yeah, so you need to address about immediate management, long-term management, you can just divide like, you know, first uh, you need to involve here the allergy especially the dietitian, those things very, very important. And uh, yeah, yeah so you need to try to avoid the trigger, trigger factor, those allergic yeah. food uh, actually stuff. And precautions actually when that when you go out and when you under um, like you know keeping injections, uh, epipen injections, and uh, how, how to identify those signs of uh, signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, okay, and uh, depending upon the severity, how to manage them. That is very very important. Yeah. Yeah, and he asked yeah. me that uh, uh, like uh, what are the chances? Like how you will assess that this child will not have a repeat uh, anaphylaxis if. This, these precautions are not taken care of so that uh, like in food in, a, in their kitchen what food items has been removed like what child has uh, allergic whether they are still being used or not whether other kids are having that or not so there is a chances of mixed uh, uh, exposure so then he asked that and then he asked about how to hold the epipen how you will tell the child i think this this is what we have practiced yeah it's just fair enough good very good yeah so we'll go to next session Sir, I finished. <laughs> oh, finished! Wow, super! I thought you uh, you still have to say something. Oh, well done. So you you could complete uh, within one hour. Uh, how much? No, because I didn't answer like Manisha for examiner. Yeah. No, that's why that's why I could finish the feedback also very early. No issues. So uh, anybody is having a question you want to ask her.